motivation, the impulse or stimulus that causes people to act. In other words, it's what gets us out of bed, into traffic, off to face the challenge of our workday lives. At times, some of us have a lot of motivation in our work lives. Hmm, I hope we get started on the Z109 project today. Morning, Gail. Gotta crack that Technicorp account this week. Other times, some of us, well, let's just say we need a little outside help. Monday, huh? Motivation. It's probably the most talked about, the least understood aspect of the workplace. But what is it really? And how can we go from motivating ourselves to motivating those who work with us and for us? Psychologists through the years have developed a lot of ideas about motivation and how it works. One of the best known theories of motivation is Douglas McGregor's Theory X and Theory Y. McGregor was a psychologist who discovered that managers appear to motivate their workers in one of two ways. Yeah, you're energetic today. What's up? Didn't you hear? The meeting in Dale's office. It's a chance of reactivating the Z109. You're kidding. Oh, and you know whose department's going to bear the brunt of it. He's going back on red alert, you know, working shifts, weekends, the works. Theory X managers deal with their workers as if the work itself was not the prime motivator. You mean keeping the plan open round the clock. That's what I get the job done, Matt. In their view, employees are not motivated by achievement but rather by money, security, and fringe benefits. Well, I guess we can handle it. Well, the right bonus program, I suppose. That had crossed my mind. Of course, it's going to take some time. Yeah, take all the time you like. But if we don't get this out on schedule, it's going to throw a shadow over the whole 89 compatible series. That's my baby you're talking about. I know how you feel, but... Fury X managers believe they should use whatever it takes to meet their organization's goals. Pressure, control, and even enticements. If we can get the Z109 out the door on schedule, it just might make the cover of Business Week. Ah. Well, JCN beat us to the market again. Theory Y managers, on the other hand, assume workers are basically achievement-oriented. We all know I love to hear myself talk, but this is a democracy, and I'm sure you've all got thoughts on it, so... I hate to say it, but the Z109 would have been first on the market if we hadn't put it on hold. That was scrubbed in part due to some kind of design flaw. Not a design flaw. The problem was how to enlarge the logical address space. And I think we've got that licked. Really? How? Theory Y managers encourage employee cooperation and growth by involving them and sharing ideas. Hood can increase that to if we could address some 4.3 billion. Exactly. Charlie, what about your diagnostics team? Are they uh, up to another siege? Yeah, they've all had a few weeks to say hi to their family. I think they're ready for another marathon. Good. Although McGregor strongly advocated Theory Y, he didn't believe it was the answer to all motivational problems. In practice, those managers combine elements of both X and Y. Well, now, so much for democratic rule. I'm going to authorize us to go full speed on the Z109. Set up design, debugging teams accordingly. It's a go. But there are still other ways to explain motivation. In particular, we need to explore the idea of individual differences. Why are different people motivated by different things? Psychologist Abraham Maslow believed that each of us has five levels of needs, which are arranged in a hierarchy of importance. Physiological needs, security, affiliation, esteem, self-actualization. These needs motivate all of us at different times and in different situations. According to Maslow, if we are hungry or thirsty, our first priority is to satisfy level one, physiological needs, before worrying about anything else. Well, one thing about working late here, we always get the best takeout. I say me some chow mein, will you? Level two involves security. Things like safety, job stability, 
and protection against danger, pain, and illness. Have you worked at Compunine? Mm -hmm. What's it like over there? The working conditions were good, but the benefits, medical, seniority, dental, they're better here. Not to mention the chicken chow mein. <laughs> there you go. You're now part of the Z109 team. Affiliation is level three, having to do with things like friendship, love, and a feeling of belonging. Wear it with pride. You know, the design team is starting to really crank. We're gonna have to set some priorities on debugging. Well, doesn't the debugging captain set priorities, Gail? Well, that's my point. We don't have one yet. Captain, congratulations. But we do now. We have the honor. Level four is esteem. We all place value on feelings of achievement and self-worth, praise, recognition, and status. <laughs> we engineers have all the fun down here, don't we, Sam? Hey, don't get me wrong. I love sales. I just wish I knew what makes these babies tick. We ought to take an 89 kid version home with you. Teach you a lot. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that one of these days. But most of us have also noticed within ourselves a desire for something more. Maslow called this the need for self-actualization, the highest level of the hierarchy. It's the level in which we attempt to reach our full potential. So, according to Maslow, we're motivated by our needs, more specifically by those needs which we have not yet satisfied. Another way of looking at motivation was provided by Frederick Herzberg. He studied the relationship between job performance and job satisfaction and emphasized something he called hygienes, those factors that can make us dissatisfied with our work when they're not present. Hygienes are factors like adequate pay and benefit programs, optimum health and safety standards, and comfortable working conditions. Oh, what more can a guy ask for? Light, heat, and shelter from the storm. And after 921 passes of this blasted program, only 30 failures. What's the problem? Another important factor is our relationship with fellow workers. 30 and 921, that's only 3%. Although the presence of hygiene will keep us from becoming dissatisfied with our jobs, we may still not be truly motivated. I say send it back to Mike's design team. Probably a design error. So, hygiene have to do with working conditions, and they must be present so we won't become dissatisfied. But Herzberg also identified a second set of factors that have to do with the work itself. Motivators. One motivator is praise, which can spur us beyond mere satisfaction with our work, on to superior performance. Well, that was the case of that transient glitch. Terrible. If it would just crash, I could trace it. Hey, Bobby, you're the best debugger I got. You gotta stay on it. I suppose I could print some hard copy of the failures. Other key motivators are advancement and responsibility. It's a good idea, Captain. That's why the rest of the team that's up to you. <laughs> According to Herzberg, motivating employees is a two-step process. First, provide hygiene so workers can concentrate on their work. And second, provide motivators to spur them on to superior performance. So far, we've been looking at motivational theories that emphasize our needs and how we go about fulfilling them. But now we add a new dimension, learning. David McClellan, another motivational theorist, believed that the needs which motivate us are not innate, but learned through experience. He defined three important needs. Achievement, the desire to seek challenges and solve problems. Power, having to do with involving others and using influence. And affiliation, developing friendships, sharing experiences, and gaining acceptance from those around us. McClellan developed a method of obtaining a motivational profile of each of us by measuring the importance we place on each of these three basic needs. But how long is it going to take? Many money? effective managers, for instance, have a similar motivational profile. A moderately strong need for achievement. A relatively low need for affiliation. But 
a high need for power. But this isn't just another knockoff we're talking about. This is a brand new design. We'll be lucky if we have it debugged. Computer buyers are a fickle lot. Without the Z at the expo, we've lost them. Listen, here's what I say. We produce a second workable prototype just for the expo. That way, debugging can proceed full speed ahead, and we'll use the 89 software since it'll be compatible. On the other hand, engineers often have a motivational profile which consists of a low need for power, a moderate need for affiliation, but a high need for achievement. Oh, no, you don't. I saw Gretel first. Come on, I just need it for a microsecond. But I've been waiting all morning to check out the section of microcode. But I just upgraded this board, and I got to see if it works. What's that? It's a simulator program I've been working on. Acts like the Z109, but on the old 89 terminal. Not on your own. No. Right. Don't mention it. <laughs> now, Walter here is working on our new Z109, and I tell you, it's a marvel. It'll outperform anything that JCN has. It's faster and has more memory. Salespeople might be expected to have a motivational profile high in affiliation. However, a good salesperson's ability with people often stems from high achievement and power needs. According to McClellan, there are no right or wrong motivational profiles. Different jobs have different requirements. Each of us have different styles. The key is to match job demands with motivational profile. But McClellan went further. He believed that needs are influenced by learning. We can be trained to develop motivational profiles that will better equip us to handle our jobs. Learning was also important to another theorist, B.F. Skinner. He was interested in ways in which our behavior is learned as a result of its consequences, both negative and positive. Just as this fellow has learned to run this maze, human behavior that is rewarded or reinforced tends to repeat itself. Behavior that is not reinforced doesn't. A simple theory with an important implication. Since most of us act in ways we find personally rewarding, all we have to do is manage those rewards, and we can influence the behavior. Say, for instance, you want to speed up production. I'm looking at the schedule. July will come and go before we get the Z programmed. If I spend any more late nights with Gretel here, uh, my wife is going to find it a bit suspicious. Listen, Gail, the design team's been working their tails off six days a week. First, you have to be able to identify the specific behavior you want to influence. Well, the way I see it, now, we could just make it by July if your design team can write 10% more microcode per week. And second, you have to be able to offer whatever will reinforce the desired behavior. In one case, it might be money. Look, I'm drafting a proposal to Daryl for bonuses for weekend work. Is the design team game? Gretel, what are you doing this weekend? <laughs> I like it, but uh, can a manufacturer have it ready to interface with the Z109? That's the problem. A lot of our peripheral manufacturers don't know the Z109 is even coming out. In another case, the most effective reinforcement might be you know, advancement. Along, Sam. What we really need is a regional marketing manager. Congratulations on the promotion. You've earned it. Thanks. <laughs> no go. We've run a trace from the point of failure. We've printed out the failure sequence. Now can we send it back to design? You know software can't budge until we give the IP a clean bill of health. And the last reinforcer is one of the most powerful incentives of all. Rewarding the employee with praise. Come on. On the 89 series, you were always coming up with creative ways to trace bugs. Gretel, Gretel, Hansel and Gretel. Hey, what if we do what they did? What do you mean? You know, lay some electronic breadcrumbs from the IP to the failure. Identify which reward will encourage the desired behavior, and you can influence it. Skinner referred to this approach as behavior modification, 
an idea that has come under attack because it can be viewed as a manipulative method of motivating others. The fact is, we already influence our employees' behavior anyway. We just don't do it in as effective or organized a way as we could. McGregor's theory X or Y, Maslow's hierarchy, Herzberg's hygienes and motivators, McClellan's motivational profile, and Skinner's behavioral modification. Which theory best explains what motivates us? First, let's consider some of the similarities between the theories. Well, it was just the logic error. It gave the IP two signals at once. I delayed one signal by inserting an AND gate. All the theories agree that human behavior can be influenced and changed. That's terrific. That yeah, just goes to show you, Bobby, that a little stick to itiveness pays off. Thanks. I think I'll run a few more passes. Sometimes you fix one bug and you create another. It's 2 a.m., guys. Why are we doing this? Integrity, my friend. Didn't you hear? I'm the best debugger at Blue Star. The theories also acknowledge that we are all individuals with different needs, wants, and values. I'll take patent royalties over compliments any day. And don't forget, if we meet the schedule, we get the ultimate reward. What's that? We get to do it all over again. <laughs> so, after 4,096 lines of microcode, 200,000 lines of software programs, and about 240 pages of schematics, <laughs> I am pleased to present the Z109. And finally, all the theories concede that understanding individual differences is a key part of learning how each of us is motivated. You know, Mike, we salesmen have all the fun, right? <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, wait. I mean, uh, it does look great, but the uh, question is, uh, what will it do? This baby does everything. That looks like baby provided some motivation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, uh, I think all of you have provided enough of that in the last six months. Thank you. Of course, there are differences in the theories as well. McGregor focused mainly on human nature to explain how we try to motivate others. Maslow identified five basic needs, from basic concerns like food, all the way to self-actualization, and suggested that we are motivated primarily by those left unsatisfied. Herzberg emphasized just two factors, hygiene and motivators, both of which affect motivation. McClellan developed a method of obtaining motivational profiles based upon the value we place on achievement, affiliation, and power. And Skinner believed that behavior can be modified once we learn to understand and control rewards. Which theory best explains why and how we are motivated? All of them can be effective when we use them in the combination best suited to the situation. Every workday brings new challenges to motivate ourselves and those around us. If we can keep in mind our similarities, as well as our differences, we'll all be motivated to work together more productively.